In the quest to understand how life on Earth came to be, and indeed how common such an occurrence is in the universe, scientists have put a significant amount of thought into just what environments could potentially host life, and even alien civilizations on distant exoplanets. In our search, however, we find that traits Earth possesses to support life and the genesis of it are not unique in our solar system, especially for microbial life. These places include some low-hanging fruit. In addition to Earth, Mars was once very Earth-like, with oceans and liquid water, and may still possess it deep below its surface, leading NASA and others to search for evidence of life on that world. Also famously are Enceladus and Europa, the most famous ice shell moons, where the ice covers oceans that may not only harbor microbial life, but maybe, just maybe, even complex oceanic life. We've even considered the very cold environment of Saturn's moon Titan as a possible abode of low temperature life as we do not know it. But aside from those more famous places, the potential for life in our solar system other than that of Earth is actually much broader than the more famous candidates. So here are 10 mysterious, more obscure places in the solar system where life could conceivably exist above and beyond the most famous candidate worlds. Number 10 the atmospheres of Jupiter and Saturn. Gas giants at first glance do not seem to be ideal planets for life to arise. It would actually be enormously difficult for abiogenesis to occur, due to the nature of it having to occur in an atmosphere rather than on land or water. But there have been ideas of it potentially being able to occur in floating water droplets if the right conditions happen. This is still a stretch, however, based on what we do know about how life arises. But on the other hand, we do not have a full understanding of that. However, there is another way for life to inhabit a gas giant. It's panspermia. So if a star system has an inhabited planet that infects a gas giant with life, which is also a rather tall order, but not in principle impossible, then that life might find a niche in the upper atmosphere of a gas giant planet and evolve there. Carl Sagan once envisioned what this life might look like. Large gas bag type creatures, flying creatures, and so on that might take advantage of the atmospheric conditions present in the upper atmosphere of these worlds. Looking for this kind of life would be extremely difficult, however, and also a low priority for robotic space missions, due to the slim chances for it to have occurred at either Jupiter or Saturn. Still, it remains a possibility. And in the coming centuries, maybe we'll go to those planets and take a closer look. Maybe there will be a surprise awaiting us. Number 9. The Asteroid Belt Another scientist that waded into the speculative life arena was none other than Freeman Dyson. Dyson's idea, known as Dyson's Sunflowers, goes like this. Life arises in an ice shell moon with a subsurface ocean that life evolves to grow up through the cracks and essentially flower with a reflective energy gathering apparatus. Imagine a flower with highly reflective petals gathering solar energy. Through further evolution, these sunflowers might sever their connection to the ocean beneath and become essentially a spacefaring plant. It's hard to envision such a thing living in deep space indefinitely for a lack of nutrients but Dyson suggested that they may colonize asteroids for that purpose. Or you could also envision it as a dandelion that scatters its seeds into deep space to colonize whatever they can. It would open up the asteroid belt as a long shot, but plausible abode for life. For any life evolved for it, asteroids are rich sources of minerals. Many of them already are loose conglomerates of soil and rocks, and they also tend to contain volatiles and water ice. At the same time, however, we have examined a handful of asteroids at this point, and nothing like this has been seen. But that's not the only place where this might occur. On the list for this as well would be the rings of Saturn. There's even one particular asteroid that might be a good candidate for something like this to happen, or be the original origin of it. It's the asteroid Ceres, which is believed to harbor a slushy, subsurface ocean where life could have arisen. Number 8. Pluto One of the great surprises in astronomy in recent years was the New Horizons flyby of Pluto, which revealed not a boring, frozen, unremarkable world, 
but a vibrant active world with no shortage of surprises. It has always been assumed that Pluto formed very distantly from the Sun in the Kuiper Belt out of cold rock and ice slowly clumping together. Pluto is also believed to have a subsurface liquid ocean, not unlike Europa. This ocean was also assumed to have formed after Pluto's formation. In other words, the heat built up below the ground due to radioactive elements decaying in Pluto's core. Recent work, however, has shown that may not have been the case, and Pluto's formation was actually hot, and the liquid water was there from the start. This is hinted at by the rather surprising surface geology of Pluto, which shows the action of freezing water expanding, creating characteristic cracks due to stretching. If Pluto had formed very cold, you'd see compression as the water melted from the radioactive decay. This is not seen in most ancient areas of Pluto's surface. The fact that Pluto's ocean may have been there for the entire history of that world means that it had every bit as much time for life to arise as Earth did. That a minor planet like Pluto can have a hot start and support liquid water oceans long term bears significant implications for the Fermi Paradox in that if something can happen at Pluto, which is far outside the Sun's habitable Goldilocks zone, then the possible environments for life pervade most star systems in the universe. It's then possible that habitable ice shell worlds may indeed outnumber stars in this universe. Number 7. The Atmosphere of Venus Normally, Venus would not seem like a candidate world for life. It once was, however, before visiting it with a probe. Venus was often envisioned as a hot world with jungles lurking beneath its permanent cloud deck. This was not the case, however. Venus turned out to be a runaway greenhouse effect world with crushing temperatures and immense surface atmospheric pressure. As a result, for many decades, Venus was neglected as a potential abode for life, and Mars came to the forefront. This was somewhat unfair, however, since the upper atmosphere of Venus hosts the most Earth-like environment in the solar system, where temperatures and atmospheric pressures are comparable to Earth. Given that we find Earth's microbial life in its own atmosphere, at least to a degree, then why not Venus? Interest in Venus as a possible home for life has recently gained more attention from the scientific community, and indeed Venus is the first entry on this list where not only could life exist, but we may have indicators that it does. There are many strange mysteries that Venus presents. The first is the unknown UV absorber. Some substance in the upper atmosphere of Venus, right at the temperate altitude, is absorbing ultraviolet light. There have been suggestions that while UV light is generally not good for Earth life, alternative forms of life might use it as an energy source. Another hint are sulfur compounds present in the atmosphere of Venus, which is full of sulfuric acid that could also form a kind of chemical shield for a microbe to exist in such an acidic environment. These compounds have been measured by probes at Venus. They are there. Another hint is the presence of small amounts of phosphine gas, which is linked with life to a degree. This finding was called into question, but it survived peer review, and there is unexplained phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. Other strange things are that the Venera probes sent by the Soviets to parachute into the atmosphere of Venus measured particles of something consistent in size with microbes. There are enough indicators at this point to catapult Venus to the first position as a candidate world for microbial life. After all, Venus may have started out as an ocean world like Earth, only to slowly convert into the hell world it is today. It wouldn't be that surprising if microbial life arose there early on, and as that world died as far as habitability, it adapted to whatever niche it possibly could in order to hold on at Venus. The good news is that we'll likely know the answer in the not too distant future as plans are being formulated for a Venus Life Finder mission geared specifically to investigate the observed anomalies in the Venusian atmosphere. Number 6. Ganymede and Callisto When discussing the question of life in the Jovian system, Europa is the elephant in the room that we often hear about. But it's not the only moon in that system that is suspected to have a liquid water ocean under a shell of ice. Ganymede and Callisto are also on the suspect list, and may both harbor extensive oceans subsurface. 
Very little is known about Callisto's ocean other than if it exists, it lies very deep below the surface, on the level of 250 kilometers or more deep, or 155 plus miles. It's possible that this ocean interacts with a rock floor, opening up the way for supporting life. But with Callisto, we may never have an answer on whether it does or does not harbor life, due to the ocean being so deeply buried beneath the surface of this moon. With Ganymede, the situation is somewhat different. In this case, Ganymede seems to be layered, meaning that there is a layer of ice, an ocean beneath it, then another layer of ice, which is a problem for life, and then rock beneath that. That's the least complicated though, as it could be. Another analysis showed that Ganymede may have stacked oceans, separated by different types of ice. Strangely, however, the evidence for some kind of liquid ocean is particularly strong with Ganymede, due to certain effects noted with this moon's aurorae. It actually has a magnetic field of its own, and that evidence suggests that Ganymede actually supports the largest ocean in the solar system, significantly larger than that of Earth. As a bonus, Saturn's moon Dione also apparently is an ice shell moon, though little is currently known about it. Number 5. The Moon You'd think the moon would be truly lifeless. Its baked surface is subject to the full fury of the sun, sterilized by it, and other than pockets of ice, is generally very, very dry. Surprisingly, however, the moon does have prospects for past and current life of several different kinds. One is the elephant in the room. It's orbiting an inhabited planet, it's easily possible for Earth microbes to get blasted off Earth and then land on the moon. Once there, they might have held on in places like shielded craters where the sun never reaches, something that NASA does have some plans to look for. Also, the moon once had a habitable time period, along with a former magnetic field. At least for a time, native life might have been possible on the moon. But there's also the question of subsurface water and possibly a haven of microbial life. It's just a matter of how deep you go below the moon's surface and how warm it is. So it's at least possible that the moon might host cousins to Earth life, or a truly alien occurrence of life. Number 4. Kuiper Belt Objects Pluto is particularly noteworthy in that it probably originated as a Kuiper Belt object, a distant cloud of minor planets that populates the outer reaches of the solar system. As it stands today, there are five known minor planets that are comparable to Pluto. Very likely there are more of these that remain undiscovered, and we may well see a steady stream of discovery of minor planets with upcoming survey telescopes like the Vera Rubin Observatory. But here's the interesting part. They may all be candidates for hosting microbial surface life, opening the way for at least tens of new candidates to someday search. This is for the same reasons that Pluto is suspected of having a subsurface ocean, radioactive decay in their cores. This is likely to be the case for any Kuiper Belt object of sufficient size. On the other hand, this may be a search that takes centuries due to distance. It's not easy to get probes out that distant, though we can do it. We just have to wait 14 or more years for something to get out there to even begin to image and look at these worlds close up. Searching them for life is much more difficult, in that we don't even have the first steps towards knowing how to do that worked out. As such, the question of life in the outer solar system may be open for quite some time yet. Number 3. Mimas and Stealth Oceans Saturn's moon Mimas is strange, above and beyond a resemblance to a Death Star. It's also the newest member of the Ice Shell Moon list. Only two months ago was it proposed to be a new one. And it introduces an entirely new class of ice shell oceanic world that was not previously thought to exist. Mimas is in stark contrast to places like Callisto and Ganymede in that it is a very tiny moon, the smallest in fact of Saturn's major moons. Recent work has shown that Mimas in fact has the right circumstances of heating to keep water liquid at some level and evidence from its huge Herschel impact basin support the idea of a very young, geologically speaking, liquid ocean under the surface. In fact, the ice shell itself may still be in the process of thinning, due to the accumulated heating that seems to be going on. The finding goes back to a curious finding years ago, by the Cassini mission, that Mimas's rotation was oscillating, known as libration. 
which tends to point towards an object being geologically active in this case. An ocean, however, was not considered, due to Mimas appearing to have an ancient and heavily cratered surface, suggesting that there was no interaction with liquid water. No water, no erasing the craters, hence the ancient surface. In other words, ice shell moons, at least those with relatively shallow water, show geysers and surface tectonics. But in the case of Mimas, that may have been situational. And in fact, the existence of the ocean represented a new kind of ice shell moon that does not show outward evidence of the ocean's existence, termed a stealth ocean world. Modeling of the huge Herschel impact crater showed that at the time when it hit, the ice shell had to be at least 55 kilometers thick. Current observations, however, show it to be around 30 kilometers thick, meaning it's thinned during the intervening time as the ocean expanded. This would be because Mimas is an emerging oceanic world in the process of formation. As to the question of life, we simply don't know what the rules are here. If the ocean is young, the chances are lesser. But not that much because microbial life appeared on Earth at the very earliest moment it possibly could have. So it may have happened at Mimas. And questions could be asked about transient water pockets that could have been quite ancient. That began to form just as soon as enough heat built up. In any case, Mimas shows that we don't yet know just how many other bodies in the solar system might have situational liquid water beneath their surfaces. Number 2. The Uranus System We have only ever been to the Uranus System once with Voyager 2. Since then, it has been a relatively neglected system due to it being difficult to get probes there. Uranus itself is quite strange but it also hosts an inordinate amount of ice shell moon candidates. Among these are Miranda and Ariel, which both show features not unlike the surface features of Enceladus and Europa. Titania, Umbriel, and Oberon are larger moons, and also good candidates for ice shell moons. What would be very difficult to study in that the usual magnetic measurements used to detect these oceans aren't present due to their distance from Uranus and the bulk of its magnetic field. Still, it might be poetic if after searching many ice shell moons in the solar system, while Uranus sat on the back burner, only to find it there in conjunction with some far future drilling mission. Number 1. Io One of the seemingly least likely places in the solar system to harbor life also happens to be one of the most dangerous solid surfaces in the solar system to land on. Wildly volcanic, unstable, and inside Jupiter's deadly radiation torus, it rounds out the Jupiter's four Galilean moons as actually being potentially habitable. The reason is, it's thought that Io, which is the most volcanic body in the solar system, also very likely started out with as much water as the other Galilean moons. Much of this water is now gone, but it's certainly possible that abiogenesis might have gotten a start there early on, and there might still be enough subsurface water to allow for microbial life to maintain some type of foothold. While this seems unlikely, there's another dimension to this. Recent breakthroughs in trying to figure out abiogenesis have come to two pieces of evidence that may push Io higher up on the list for places to look for life. The first is that RNA generation appears to involve water and nutrients percolating through basaltic volcanic glasses, something Io very likely has. Another point is the formation of protocell walls seems to involve hot springs that periodically and repeatedly dry out, again something Io may have once conceivably had. So this body, while surprising and volcanically violent, is a rising star in the question of where life might be located in the solar system. Thanks for listening, I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently eyeing the planet Mercury suspiciously. With so many speculative possibilities regarding places where life might have arisen, this is the one planet that, to this day, has no prospects that I'm aware of. All of the other classical planets have it in some form, but Mercury simply seems to be a germaphobe that has something against microbial life. Very unsavory. Be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular, in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.